Welcome back. So far, we've touched on some important topics like the cattle markets and how we can control input costs. Now, let's turn our attention to consumer wants and demands and how that impacts our bottom line. You know, uh, I, I read an article uh, earlier this fall that said a group of advertisers and marketers identified the word transparency as the number one marketing word of 2016. I think the same is true in the beef cattle industry, and I guess I'd begin with you, Sasha. What are we doing in the industry to be more transparent and to address this issue that consumers really want to know where and who is producing their food? A lot of social media. Uh, communicate a lot with social media right now. The millennials, the millennial moms, are the ones making a lot of the decisions on what's on the plate. Uh, those millennial moms spend a lot of time on social media. Um, and so we need to tell them the hows and the whys uh, through social media, you cannot over-communicate with a consumer at all. That's a great point. Uh, Craig, uh, how do you think consumer preferences and concerns are going to change uh, the production practices and literally how we produce beef in the United States? Well, I think we're going to uh, continue. We're, we're going to have these pressures that are going to continue. You know, uh, I was going to add on to uh, on the Sasha's a little bit that. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of influencer tours, and, and what I mean by that is we have uh, registered dietitians, doctors, and, and third-party verifiers that have, have big followings uh, such as on social media, and uh, we, uh, we, we take those folks around our operations and show them what production is. You know, a lot of times they have a negative view of what's going on there for what they hear, and once they go through these operations with the cow-calf and the feedlot and even even the processing centers, they have a whole different view of what beef production is. You know, I was at a, uh, uh, I, I was at a conference where I had a uh, lady ask me what a cow-calf operation was, okay? And this person is a, a registered dietitian that actually is in favor of our product, but they don't even, that, that's how disconnected some of, some of the people are. So we really have to have a, a big education process on this. That's a great point. And you know, uh, one of the things that we do at NCBA is the uh, Masters of Beef Advocacy Program. I know, Sasha, you've been through that program. Is that right? Yes, I recently went through that program. It's a wonderful program. Um, everybody that uh, is involved in the beef industry should do it. it teaches you from top to bottom how to co communicate with consumers. And I am continuously amazed anytime I engage consumers on how little many of them know. Um, a lot of this, the stuff, the information that we have, we must take for granted. Um, and, and so that, that MBA program is great. And, uh, and I enjoyed going through it and, and enjoy communicating with consumers. Well, and this whole topic of uh, just equipping ourselves to do a better job communicating those things, whether it be what a cow-calf operation is or why and how we use antibiotics or the difference between grass-fed and grain-fed beef, those are all issues that consumers want to know. And we need to be equipped to be able to share those issues. So, so let's talk about the product itself. Are we producing, Craig, the kind of product that consumers want? Uh, certainly, you, you, you mentioned that we've uh, uh, really improved our ability to, to create a, a more uh, consistent and higher quality product over the last 10 years, right? You know, yes. As we look back, we, we, we conduct something called the Beef Quality Audit, sure. and uh, that will be coming out this summer. And I think uh, producers will be interested in how much we continue to improve. You know, um, one thing about it, we have a lot of uh, choice cattle out there today. You know, it wasn't many years ago that we were grading uh, 55 to 57% choice. And today uh, we're right on top of 80% choice and better. So we've really got a high quality product out there. Uh, can it be improved? Sure. You know, we, we look at uh, uh, some of the extra uh, fat that some of, when you get the quality, sometimes you have some extra fat. So there's a lot of things that we're looking at there. But I think uh, the thing we look at different today as we address issues in the industry when we look at the beef quality audit uh, something like that was we're, we've tackled a lot of low-hanging fruit and so we have improved in quality we've improved on fat we've improved on on carcass blemishes uh, uniformity is better but you know there's some now we get into that uh, word of sustainability and, and, and going back and talking about uh, social and environmental uh, not as much in the environmental, but the social aspect of what we do and how we present that product up the chain to our consumer. 
And Sasha, I'm going to pick on you for just a minute as a mom, because I think not only is it about a quality product, we have to help people, especially millennials, be successful in cooking the product. So many people don't know how to prepare beef. And uh, what would you say in that regard? How can we help people be successful with beef? Well, we are all consumers, um, and, and I am fortunate to be a millennial mom. Uh, so I'm involved with a lot of these moms and stuff, and we don't have a lot of time. Uh, we're busy with soccer practice and basketball and everything else. And so um, I always get excited on Facebook or something where I see a new recipe or something where they, they put it in motion right there and you can watch it and I, you, you like it, you share it, you do what you can um, to kind of get it out there. And, and any time, I know the Beef Checkoff funded, uh, they, they go through and they make uh, take new cuts and new ideas and make it faster and easier, more affordable. And, and all that, that is going to appeal to to the millennial moms that don't have time to cook beef. So it's always exciting when you when you come across something new that you can share with all these guys and hopefully get them again to the beef counter. And that is a target audience for us in the beef industry. So thanks for that perspective.